that dazzled the crowd and the judges. I'm very happy about the feedback from the judges and from the audience. So after the act, I, I tell Hurricane, Hurricane, everything is good. Hey, we got to play. Now they have to prepare a new routine. Maybe um, an emotional performance, or maybe a funny one, like a comedy. You never know. <laughs> what Adrian is certain of is his four-legged pal, Hurricane. She's my best friend. A bond that has them finale bound. Mark Barger. NBC News. Right now at 6, hot and uncomfortable. Heat alerts still in place right now. Our first alert weather team tracking some relief on the horizon. And it has been nearly a week since a gunman opened fire in an Orange County bar and restaurant. Now we are hearing from a survivor of that mass shooting in Tribuco Canyon. His message tonight from his hospital bed. It's all new at 6. This is NBC4 News at 6. Well, extreme heat continues to hit Southern California. Many places saw triple-digit temperatures once again. Good evening, everyone. I'm Carolyn Johnson. And I'm Colleen Williams. The heat alerts continue right now, but relief is coming. Our meteorologist, David Bigger, has been keeping a close eye on all the temperatures. He's here now with the first alert forecast. David. Yeah, the good news is that we finally are starting to drop out of the triple digits from this afternoon. The bad news is that we will still see some of that for tomorrow. So here's what we're looking at right now across the Inland Empire. 102 still in San Bernardino. Same with Hemet. 102, 103, uh, 101 in Paris, I should say. 98 degrees though right now. Riverside, 95 degrees in Corona. We've dropped down to about 99 degrees in Temecula. Across the San Fernando Valley, still in the triple digits around Woodland Hills and Pacoima, but we're starting to drop back into about the 90s across the rest of the valley. The San Gabriel Valley back into the mid to upper 90s currently and 98 degrees in Santa Clarita. But for tomorrow, even though we will be slightly cooler, we are still looking at some hot temperatures inland. So we actually have a moderate risk of heat related illnesses for Wednesday, and that means this will really affect anybody who's sensitive to the heat and does not have access to effective cooling. So again, a lot of the basin spots and a lot of the coastal areas don't necessarily have access to air conditioning and that could potentially be a problem as we get into tomorrow. Here's the hour by hour forecast of the IE for tomorrow. I specifically wanted to point out the morning here. Temperatures by 8 o'clock in the morning already in the upper 70s. We're into the 80s by 9 o'clock in the morning. Probably want to limit your time outside after about 10 a.m. because we'll be just shy of 90 degrees heading up into the triple digits as we get into the afternoon. But as Colleen mentioned, we do have relief coming our way. I'll show you when that's going to happen in just a couple of minutes. Back to you. And David, you just mentioned this for people with no access to air conditioning or other ways to stay cool. The heat could be a matter of life and death. The I team found a lag in reporting heat related deaths, maybe making it difficult to tell the full picture of what's happening in our communities. Investigative reporter Lolita Lopez spoke with LA's heat officer to get answers. It's the type of heat that is beyond uncomfortable. For many, it can be deadly. UCLA researchers painting a picture of what happens on extremely hot days. They say at least a dozen more deaths happen on extreme heat days in Los Angeles County. Heat has been the silent killer. The disturbing reality is not lost on the city of Los Angeles' first chief heat officer, Marta Segura, who says they had to be nimble during these latest hot days. We've added a uh, uh, cooling center in East Los Angeles for this particular heat wave because we were told by the National Weather Service that this time it was going to be impacting more of East LA. Cooling centers now on this new city app that also shows available pools, recreational facilities and libraries, all places to beat the heat citywide. Segura points to areas of greatest concern. The Valley, uh, areas like Silmar, Pacoima, um, Canoga Park, where we have less tree canopy and less air conditioning, communities that have lacked infrastructure. In real time, are you concerned that heat related deaths are being missed and that we're not tracking it efficiently enough. Yeah, I, I definitely am concerned. The I team wanted to know how many heat related deaths have been documented in the state over the last few years. We obtained information from the California Department of Public Health, but it only showed deaths through 2020. The department also telling us the data may not represent all heat related deaths that occurred during that time. And they added there's an average lag of six to 12 months to get this type of information.